So, what the last of chapter four has in store for us is how to model things using exponentials. We have generally two types of exponential problems. We have exponential growth and exponential decay. And what an exponential model is really telling you is that the rate of change, so the rate at which y changes, is in some way proportional to its current state. Make sense? So if five people have COVID and they can each spread it to two people, then you're going to have potentially 10 people sick next. This is an example of the rate of a uh, exponential growth problem. In the case of COVID spread, it's actually logistics, but for small values, it exhibits exponential behavior. So they give us a proof for how to solve for what Y is. I'm not personally a big fan of their proof. And the reason why is because it leaves a lot out. The actual proof for how to solve for Y we're going to talk about this symbol here later, but we start by saying the change in y with respect to the change in time is equal to some constant times the current state of y. Well, if we think of dy and dt as differentials, we can separate them out on either side, and we can divide both sides by y to get dy over y is equal to k times dt. For right now, we can think of this funny little S symbol as undoing the derivative. And if you undo the derivative here, what you have is the ln of y, because what gives you 1 over y as a derivative? Well, the ln of y does. And what gives you a constant as a derivative? Well, something times a constant, right? So from here, where we exponentiate both sides, we get y is equal to some constant plus kt as a power of e. We can rewrite this as another constant, and we get that in exponential growth or decay models, y is equal to some constant times e raised to another constant times time. And this is the law of exponential growth or decay. Now, if k is less than zero, then this thing's decaying. If k is greater than zero, then this thing is growing. Cool. A really common application is radioactive uh, half-lives. And in fact, we just saw a half-life problem a minute ago. And what this is telling us is at a certain time, only half of our stuff remains. So let's say we're working with some amount of uh, radium. After 1,599 years, only half of the radium that we started off with remains. So let's think about this. At time zero,
I'm going to write this as for right now, an I for initial, right? Initial amounts. At time zero, the amount that we have is going to be equal to the initial amount. And I'm going to claim that radioactive substances decay. So we can describe that with the model A is equal to, just like we saw, C times E K T. So this is telling us then that at time equal to zero, C times E K zero is equal to our initial amount. Well, K times zero is zero. E raised to the zero is just the first power. It's just one, right? So we just found right away that whatever our constant out front is, it has to be equal to our initial amount, right? Okay. So this tells us now that our thing is decaying like this. We have our initial amount i. We don't know what the rate of decay is, but we know that this is going to model how it decays, right? Because we just saw for what happens at time equal to zero. And that told us that C had to be equal to our initial amount. Okay. Well, from this, we now know, from what we started with at the top here, we know that at time equal to 1,599 years, our amount is equal to half of our initial amount, right? Agree? So this tells us then that one half I is equal to I times E K times 1,000 599. Okay. Well, given this, we can cancel out those eyes. To get one half is equal to E to the K times 1599. We want to solve for K because we want to find this model, right? That's what we're trying to find with this setup here. So what this is going to show us then is that if we take the ln of both sides, we get the ln of one half is equal to, well, the ln of E raised to K times 1,599, that's just going to be K times 1,599, agree? So dividing both sides by 1,599, we get that the ln of one half divided by 1,599 is equal to K. This is called the half-life of K. Starting up ranges. And the model that we just saw tells us that if we want to model the amount of radium that's going to left to be left over after some period of time, that equation is going to look like A is equal to our initial amount times E raised to the ln of one half divided by 15,000 or minus eight, 1,599 
times t. That's what we just found. So this was kind of a clunky way of demonstrating what this is and how to solve these problems when they set up. Let's look at a better set up problem. Let's say we're given one gram of radium. And we're told that in this particular uh, isotope of radium, only half of it remains after a thousand years. What this means is to model this, so let's erase all of this. model all of this, we're going to start with the assumption that this thing can be modeled using exponential growth of the k. We'll say we've got a is equal to some constant times e raised to the k times t. And at time equal to zero, We know we have one gram. That's our amount. And our amount is equal to C times E K raised to the zero in this case. Well, like I said before, this is going to tell us that we've got C times E raised to the zero. This is just going to be equal to C. So that must mean then that C is equal to one grain. And that's because we're told initially we have one grain, right? Now, the next thing we're told is that at time equal to 1000, we have 0 0.5 grams. All I've done here is I said, all right, we know what C is. Let's go ahead and just plug in that one, right? And we're told that we're looking at time equal to a thousand. So let's go ahead and plug that in too. Cool. Now to go ahead and solve from this, we're going to say, all right, cool. So we know that 0 0.5 is equal to E raised to the K times 1000. Take the ln of both sides. So solving for k then, Sarah, this tells us that the ln of one half is equal to k times a thousand. Solve for k, and we get that k is equal to the ln of one half divided by a thousand. So the equation that models this problem, that models this situation, is A is equal to one gram times E raised to the ln of one half 
divided by a thousand times t. Really quickly looking at this problem. They start off by saying the exact same thing, right? Initially, we have one gram. So at time equal to zero, we have one gram. That lets us solve for C. Now, the next step is to solve for when only half remains. This problem really just messed with us because they gave different numbers. Oh, I misread the problem. I misread the problem. I read it to be five grams at a thousand years. So just pretend like that's what I saw. Um, the half life of radium 256, I think it's 256, is 1,599 years. So we're going to have a little bit more than half. But had I read it correctly, And what I read was correct, this would be the way to go about it. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay. And the general way of setting this up is you want to solve initially for when time is equal to zero. You want to do that because that lets you solve for your constant C. If you can't solve for when time is equal to zero, then you're going to have to play with it a little bit. Here's an excellent example of having to play with it a little bit. In this problem, we're trying to model the number of flies that will be in a particular area, say a jar, after so many days. So we're assuming that this is going to obey an exponential growth model. We're going to say that at time equal to two, we have 100 flies. And at time equal to four, we have 300 flies. How are we going to solve this? What do you all think? What can we do here? Well, let's notice that C is going to be constant for time, right? Like it doesn't change with respect to time. So if we were to divide these two equations against each other, we'd get rid of C, right? So what I am saying is, this is telling us that no matter what C is, C times E to the K times two is going to be equal to 100. And no matter what C is, coming over here, that C times E to the K times four is going to be equal to 300. Okay. We can get rid of those C's pretty quick and easy if we divide them against each other, right? If we say, that C e to the K times four divided by C e to the K times two, right? That'll let us cancel out those C's, won't it? 
And it will also let us say that this thing is going to be equal to 300 over 100. Well, first we can rewrite this fraction. That's just three. Great. And we can rewrite this fraction as e to the k times four times e to the negative k times two. That's equal to three. So we can rewrite this as e to the k four minus two, four e to the k times two is equal to three. What is wrong with it? Does anybody see what's wrong with my arithmetic? Neither do I. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Okay. Oh, that's why. Ah. So what I was seeing, what I was responding to was e to the k times two is equal to three, but at time equal to two, it should be a hundred. Notice we don't have C here, though. This is E, right? That's why I was like, wait, what is wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's right so far. So what this is telling us then is that the ln of E to the K times two is equal to the ln of three. But the ln of K times of E the k times two, that's equal to k times two is equal to the ln of three. And so we can solve now for k, k is equal to the ln of three divided by two. From here, and say, cool, we know what K is now. And since we know what K is, we can solve for C. C times E to the ln of three divided by two times T this is now our model, right? Now we've got to solve for C. She's going to tell us the initial number of flights we started off with. Well, since we've got a two in the denominator inside of our exponential, right? It would make sense for us to go ahead and look at time equal to two because that'll cancel out pretty nicely. So what this tells us then is that C times E to the ln of three over two at time equal to two, that's going to be equal to 100. Well, like I just said, we've got some cancellations in here. This is equal to C times E to the ln of three is 100. 
Well, e to the ln of three, that's just three. So we have c times three is equal to 100. So C must be one hundred divided by three, or thirty-three point three three p. Now, quickly checking our work compared to what they've done. Notice they start off by setting up the same set of equations, right? They say, hey, 100 is equal to C times E to the 2K, and 300 is equal to C times E to the 4K. So that means we could divide these things against each other. We can divide these things against each other to get this relationship which allows us to solve for k, which is exactly what we got for k, right? The ln of three divided by two is equal to k. So we plug that in and we say, well, at time equal to two, this thing's gotta be equal to 100, bada bing, bada boom. We get 33 at time equal to zero, right? We get that c is equal to approximately 33. And the rest of the problem follows from that. Everybody cool with this? So we approximately start off with 33 plus. We've already talked about compounding interest. Um, in, in fact, we've already looked at this exact problem. Except in this case, we're told that at time equal to six, we have two times the amount that we started with. We're trying to solve for what R is. R would have to, in this case, not to be 11.5%. Uh, having said that, for the sake of, of making sure all the stuff for the homework is taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and let you all out early. That way I can get that homework posted. Um, again, sorry about that, everyone. You know, that's a real headache. And it sucks to be suddenly given homework when you weren't expecting it. Um, so with that, you all are free to go.